you're watching study with sudhir this is your digital classroom my name is ts sudhir we are looking at the voice of the rain which is a poem written by walt whitman a very famous poet and this is part of the class 11 cbsc hornbill textbook for english literature uh, before we get to the poem if couple of things which you should know about the poem that it was first published in 1885 in a periodical called outing and later on it was reprinted in leaves of grass right uh, what is this poem all about now in the poem the speaker is speaking to the personified figure of the rain right so rain has been personified and the poet is actually speaking to rainfall as if it is a human being and what the poem does is then to describe every stage of the water cycle and in that sense it is a celebration of nature also being respectful towards the nature's cycle it talks about evaporation it talks about the way the rainfall falls down on the same earth and makes the point the larger point point that poetry also nourishes mankind and humanity just in the same manner that rain rainfall nourishes the earth right so that's a larger point that this poem is making and who art thou said I to the soft falling shower. Now the soft falling shower is an important phrase which, which the poet has used to describe the rainfall and you would do well to underline it and make a note of it. Which strange to tell gave me an answer as here translated. I am the poem of earth, another important phrase, the poem of earth, said the voice of the rain. Which is why I said it has been personified as if the rain is actually speaking. Eternal. I rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea. Impalpable means something that cannot be touched or felt. Upward to heaven whence vaguely formed altogether changed and yet the same. I descend to lave the drops, atoms, atomies, dust layers of the globe. Lave means to wash or to bathe. And all that in them without me were seeds only latent unborn. And forever by day and night I give back life to my own origin and make pure and beautify it. Now atomy is essentially referring to just like atoms, tiny particles. For song issuing from its birthplace after fulfillment, wandering, wrecked or unwrecked, duly with love returns. Latent essentially means something which is hidden. Right. So this is the very short poem. Now what essentially is the poet saying in this particular poem? Now, when he says, who art thou, he means to say, who are you? And he's asking the very light rain because it is a soft falling shower, right? And the rain replies by saying, I am the poem of earth. So immediately, the rainfall is making a connect from the earth because the rainfall's origin is essentially from the earth, from the water, bodies, etc. on earth, right? Evaporating going to the clouds and then falling back to the same earth. So rainfall has a very deep connection with Mother Earth directly, which is why the rainfall is saying, I am the poem of Earth. And the poet calls this a little strange because he is the one who is the poet, right? And the fact that the poem of Earth is actually, rainfall is actually replying to it, is actually speaking to the poet. And the rain then goes on to speak about how it rises through evaporation as vapor and from the land, the sea, the water bodies up to the sky forming clouds and then comes down to wash away the drought on earth, the dust and then fill up the water bodies with water. Now, why is rain so celebrated and why is it deemed to be so important as far as the earth is concerned and also makes the central theme of this particular poem by Walt Whitman because everything on it and that's what the poet says or the, the poem the rainfall says because everything on earth without the contribution of the rainfall the fresh showers of the rain is like a seed that cannot grow right and therefore it gives life to its own origin it gives back life to its own origin basically replenishing and nourishing the places that it comes from and that makes it very beautiful and very clean and it's an interesting comparison to poetry that has been made because songs after they have written also wander 
giving joy to people who actually hear them, giving joy to people who hear those songs. And finally, they return to the people they actually originated from. In the last line, wrecked or unwrecked means irrespective of whether they are appreciated or not appreciated. Now, let us come to the larger points that have been made in this poem. Now, it is of course a poem written directly about rain and as I said, it is celebrating rainfall. But it operates at two different levels like all of Walt Whitman's poems which are a little complicated. They have different meanings. It is a very layered kind of piece of work. So, it is speaking about rain but it is operating about two, at two levels. One straight away about rain, about how it originates and where it originates from and what it does thereafter. At a deeper level, it is also about poetry itself. And uh, in fact, when I was reading the poem, I thought this the title of the poem, which is the voice of the rain could actually have been the poetry of the rain, right? Because the rainfall is making a direct comparison between it, a correlation between itself and poetry. So the rain also, just like the soft falling shower is also supposed to have its own rhythm. It's supposed to have its own meter, the way it falls from the sky onto the parched earth, right? And as it compares itself with poetry, rainfall essentially underlines and highlights and emphasizes the fact that it has a rain-like life cycle, right? Uh, uh, and it is vital and nourishing the uh, world, both poetry as well as rainfall. And just like rainfall, which is everlasting, perpetual, it comes every season, poetry is also everlasting and perpetual. Now, at one level, you could actually see this poetry almost like a geography lesson, right? The way you learn about evaporation, condensation, precipitation, you know, about the whole water cycle, the rainfall cycle, right? Uh, in fact, it starts by talking about that eternal I rise impalpable out of the land and the bottomless sea. Uh, this means that at that point in time, the rainfall has not taken the physical shape of the waters falling on the earth, right? And it's almost like when you compare it with poetry, it's almost like when you start to begin to write, it's just the thoughts which come to your mind, right? A poet or a writer or an author essentially has this very, very unformed thoughts in his or her mind, right? So the, that stage of rainfall is like that when it is actually in the form of vapor going up to the sky, to the clouds, right? So there is no language, no meter, no rhythm to those thoughts which are forming in the poet's mind at that point in time. It is only later when they take the shape of words that they actually form poetry. Similarly, till the point that it actually goes up to the clouds in the form of evaporation, rainfall is not rainfall the way we know about it. So at another point, I mean that is what I felt that when I was reading the poem, this, the poem, this almost seems like a, a tribute to nature, right? Uh, in fact, a tribute to nature poets like, for instance, William Birdsworth, whose daffodils uh, was part of the ICSC syllabus, and you would have read about William Birdsworth, like nature poets before, who were really very inspired by nature, and they also celebrated nature. So it is like the poem also was arising from, originating from nature itself, just like the land as well as the bottomless sea that Walt Whitman is mentioning out here. Now the next line of the poem, upward to heaven whence vaguely formed, altogether changed and yet the same, is essentially talking about the point when the thoughts of the poet have actually translated into actual words and they have formed shape and that is where it, he says vaguely formed, like the clouds, it is also uh, it is not complete as yet but at the same time it has taken some kind of shape. I descend to lave the dots, uh, atomies, dust layers of the globe. Now when he is when he's talking about the rainfall having descended, lave essentially as I said it means to wash and to bathe and the reference is to the life giving qualities of rainfall itself as it completely nourishes the dryness of the earth which is kind of uh, you know, starving for water, thirsty for water after the summer and the drought during the summer months, right? So the poetry in that sense also has the same quality. When you actually hear a very nice kind of a poem, it kind of enriches you. It kind of soothes and uh, cools down your soul. You know, it's also like water for the soul of your body that it actually quenches the 
thirst of your soul itself and in that sense it energizes you and energizes humanity in general then it says and all that in them without me were seeds only latent unborn latent as i said means hidden so it says that the poet is basically underlining emphasizing the rainfall's role as a life sustaining force out here otherwise they would just be seeds and they wouldn't be able to germinate without the contribution of rainwater and that's how it actually helps in giving life and uh, this is also a reference to how it evaporates from one place and provides water on the same earth right from the same earth it goes up and returns the same water to uh, mother earth so in the same way uh, poetry also originates by the poet on behalf of the poet and his inspiration is life around him right and then he gives the shape of words and gives the same poetry in a different in a more formed form to the same mankind to the same humanity right so taking inspiration from nature and giving it back to humanity the rains mention that it's making the voice of the rains mention of seeds only latent unborn is also relating to poetry as some kind of a life source saying that both rainfall and poetry in that sense are a life source nourishing mankind and humanity and the emphasizing the fact that human beings also need poetry to grow just as seeds also need rainfall to grow so in that sense both are giving life so talking about poetry which actually has a deeper meaning about life forever by day and night i give back life to my own origin and make pure and beautified poetry beautifies lends beauty to mankind similarly uh, by ensuring that the seeds are able to germinate and grow into plants rainfall also beautifies mother earth now the last two sentences if you see are written in a uh, in, within brackets now basically uh, they make a more direct connection and uh, between rain and poetry right uh, which is why he is also put in brackets because while the rest of the poem the first half of the poem is a conversation between the poet and rainfall uh, the last two lines are almost like a comment written a narrative written by the poet himself right so which is why the last two sentences are put in brackets you would see the use of the word love in the last sentence of the poem wrecked or unwrecked duly with love returns now uh, so far we have seen in the first half of the poem in the majority of the poem that he is talking about the life cycle of both the rainfall as well as poetry but now with the use of the word love he wants to make it seem like this is actually an expression of love it's not just a nature cycle that Walt Whitman is talking about in his own commentary he is talking about it as an expression of love and in that sense by talking about it as an expression of love he is taking this personification of rain to another level now there are critics who have also described the rain as a very soulful kind of a being as as a while being personified as someone who has a mind and in that sense a soul so because it loves the earth from which it rises and eventually falls down on the same earth and if, if the, the 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 phrase that i asked you to mark at the beginning the soft falling shower that's important because when you think of a soft falling shower it gives you the imagery of a very light and a very pleasant kind of a drizzle it's not a downpour right a downpour has a sense of force to it when you think of a drizzle it has something of a very romantic notion to it something associated with love so that is the kind of feeling he is getting while he is reciting the poem and that's probably the reason for this very beautiful expression of love that he makes at the end of the poem because the speaker thinks that the poetry like rainfall is also an act of love enriching the listeners the readers of that poetry in the same manner just like rain enriches and uh, kind of nourishes life on earth right now uh, there are a couple of interesting poetic devices which have been used in this poem that you would do well to note one of course is apostrophe now apostrophe is essentially a literary device which refers to a speech or address to a person who is not present right now rainfall here is actually not present uh, but 
it is being addressed out there. So, it actually comes from the Greek word called apostrophein, P H E I N, which means to turn away. Uh, but apart from this, what takes this particular poem to another level is the fact that the rain actually replies to the poet. Not only is the rain being personified, it actually speaks back to the poet directly and which is the reason why this particular phrase has been used in the second sentence strange to tell because it is obviously taken aback and surprised by the fact that rain is actually replying to the poet uh, and he obviously does not know much about what to really make of the reply from the rain. Uh, the use of the word translated in the second sentence, it also suggests that probably rain spoke a different language and therefore it needed to be translated. And uh, the fact that the title of the poem itself, the voice of the rain, you could get a question on the title of the poem, uh, emphasizes that one on the voice of the rain emphasizes also on the language of the rain because it needed some kind of translation. So, the language that rain speaks is also perhaps that needed the expert translation on behalf of the poet in order to be able to be understood by people at large that it was different and therefore it needed translation. Now, when you talk about the voice of the rain, another point that you need to make if you get a question about the significance of the title of the poem, the other point is the voice of the rain. The voice of the rain is obviously soft falling, soft being the operative word. It also suggests that it is something very fragile, something very delicate right? and something obviously very beautiful as I said. Uh, but when he is translating the voice of the rain, Walt Whitman has made it his own kind of thing. You know, As if by translating, he has been able to make it understandable by a larger a part of humanity and thereby entering into a very friendly, um, a very close, a very intimate kind of relationship with rain itself, which is why at the end of the poem, he is taking the liberty of using the word love. So, the word love also operating at different levels. One, of course, for the love uh, between rain and earth and also for the love between the narrator, the poet and rainfall itself. Right. Uh, there is of course then other poetic devices like alliteration, soft falling shower, S, S, you know the use of the word S close to each other. Then of course the use of imagery, uh, the soft falling shower basically gives you a very visual imagery of a light drizzle. Then of course there is the metaphors which have been used uh, for instance comparing the qualities of two things, comparing poem to uh, a rain, uh, to the rainfall. Then there is a use of hyperbole, essentially exaggeration bottomless sea you know you obviously the sea also has a bottom but by talking about the bottomless sea it's talking about he's almost as if conveying a sense of infinity then uh, use of consonants like descend drought dust the d uh, sound of the consonant being repeated uh, then there is of course no particular rhyming scheme to this particular poem which makes it almost like a conversational kind of a quality it gives to the poem and of course anaphora because there are three sentences which start with the same word and and all that in them and forever by day and night and make beauty pure and beautify it. So, that is the uh, poetic device of anaphora which has been used. So, that is as far as this particular poem is concerned. Please go through the questions which have been given on the next page which talks about there are two voices in the poem, who do they belong to, which lines indicate this. So, please quote a lot from the poem that will enrich your answers, right? What is the phrase strange to tell me? I have already explained that. There is a parallel drawn between rain and music. Which words indicate this? Explain the similarity between the two, rainfall and poetry. Please get into it and please get into different lines and explain every meaning. It is a very short poem. So, you should be able to quote extensively from the poem. As I said, that will always help you get more marks. So, easy questions, easy poem, but if you are able to understand the meaning of the poem and understand what the poet has tried to convey through this poem, the beauty of the poem is also something which your answers should be able to convey and communicate to, the, to your examiner in order for you to get good marks. Thank you very much for watching. Any problems, any doubts, please write in the comment section and I would be more than happy to address them. Thank you.